In this product demo, you will see DataBridge for SuperOffice in action. DataBridge for SuperOffice is the most widely used integration platform for connecting enterprise applications on premises and into the cloud, all without custom coding. It features reading and writing to all standard SuperOffice data objects, including writing to SuperOffice service and integrating external documents. DataBridge comes with data transformations. Integrations can be scheduled or can be triggered based on SuperOffice changes or external events. It is a versatile platform to handle standard data formats used by many business applications. Like accounting, finance and ERP systems. Integrations are created by following a guided wizard. You start by creating a new profile. In the location drop-down, you select one of the available sources. In the destination drop-down, you select the target. In step 1 of the wizard, you configure the profile. Depending on the used source, a connection must be made. If applicable, you can select the data file. DataBridge can also handle multi-entity data files. A multi-entity file is for example, a file that has information on the company, person, financial, and sales data, all on one row. Using multi-entity data files eliminates the need to create multiple profiles. The file I have selected, has information on companies, persons, finance, and sales data. In step 2 of the wizard, you need to configure the source. Since I have selected an Excel sheet as my source, I can specify details of the sheet I'm using. In the preview overview, I see a few lines of the data file I want to process. However, I notice that certain columns do not match the data requirements of SuperOffice. For example, the category column does not match the SuperOffice category list. Also, the VAT column is not nicely formatted and contains unnecessary characters. The contact person name is not split into first name and last name, which is required for SuperOffice. And the sales information has no information on the responsible account manager. All these typical situations can be fixed by using data transformation or one of the settings you can use. So, in step 3 of the wizard, you set up the required transformations. There are many transformations available you can use to format your data. First, we need to handle the category column. Let's add a new map list transformation. Select the appropriate column. Specify the output column name and select the correct SuperOffice drop-down list. Now we can map the source values between the SuperOffice values. Second, we want to clean the VAT number field, so a new transformation called Clean Field is added. And last we need to split the column with the contact person into two separate fields. This can be achieved by using the Split Field transformation. Select the appropriate column, Specify the output column name, and select the correct segments. Repeat this step as well for the last name field. Now it's time to connect the source data to the right fields in SuperOffice. In step 4 of the wizard, you need to configure the fields. From the Entity section, you select the entity which gives you access to all the available fields. Remember the transformations we have set up. The VAT field is clean, so all spaces and punctuations are removed. The new category, first and last name fields we have created with the transformations, are also available. The first columns hold information regarding the company, so select the company entity and start typing the field name. Let's speed this up a little bit. Now we are at the persons column, so we select the person entity and start mapping these fields. We are going to do the same for the sales information. In step 5 of the wizard, you need to configure the destination. An important step is to set up the deduplication settings, making sure that no duplicate records will be created. Since we are integrating not only companies but persons and sales information as well, we also need to set the deduplication setting for all three entities. In the action drop-down, you can select which action needs to be taken when a duplicate record is found. It is possible to add all new or updated records into a SuperOffice selection to keep track of what has been added or updated in your SuperOffice environment. Remember? The data set had no information regarding the owner of the sale. Situations like these can easily be fixed by using the advanced settings and choose the appropriate option. In step 6 of the wizard, you define the specific profile settings. You can indicate if the profile is started manually, scheduled to run on a certain date or time, 
or executed by a super office event or an external trigger. I'll set up a daily schedule. In the notification setting, you can indicate if you want to receive an email after a successful or failed execution. Step 7 shows you an overview of all the settings you have made. Now let's see the end result once the profile has been executed. Since I had indicated that new records should be added to a super office selection, DataBridge created a new selection. In this selection, I see the companies which have been added by the DataBridge profile. When I switch to one of the companies, I can see that all data has been added, and not only the standard address fields. Also, the financial information, ERP information, accountancy information, and the NPS score have been added to the more fields of the company card. The related contact person with all its details has been attached to the company. Since we also handled sales information, the related sale is also attached to the company card, with the right contact person and account manager. You have seen how to integrate external data into SuperOffice. With DataBridge it's also possible to extract data from SuperOffice, so this can be used in other systems as well. Let's assume you need a daily update of all closed sales deals registered in SuperOffice. Besides information about individual sales, you also need the registered company information to determine where the sales is connected to. You start by either creating a static or a dynamic selection to define the SuperOffice data you want to use for the external system. Let's create a new selection with all updated sales. Within the selection I create the two criteria required. Criteria 1, all sales with the status sold. Criteria 2, the last update of the sales should be before today. Since we have used a dynamic selection in SuperOffice, this selection will automatically be updated when sales are marked as sold in SuperOffice. Let's switch back to DataBridge and create a new profile. In the location dropdown, you select one of the available sources. In the destination dropdown, you select the target. In step 1 of the wizard, you configure the profile. Depending on the used source, a connection must be made. In step 2 of the wizard, you need to configure the source. You specify the selection which we have just created in SuperOffice. In the customize field selection, you specify the fields you need. Remember, we have created a sale based selection, However since everything is linked in SuperOffice, you do not have only access to the sale data, but also have access to the related entities. You add fields just by typing the field names, let's add some company fields of the related sales. If you want to change the order of a field, just move the field name. Since we also need some sales data, let's add the sales fields as well. In the advanced settings, you have several options available. For example getting data from custom SuperOffice service tables and setting the language code for the multi-language lists in SuperOffice. In the preview overview, I see a few lines of the data which come from the SuperOffice selection. However, I notice that certain data will not fit the external system. For example, instead of using the country name, the country code is required. Also, a mandatory column indicating that the data is coming from SuperOffice is not present, and a column would be required with a date and timestamp. All these typical situations can be resolved by using data transformations. So, in step 3 of the wizard, you set up the required transformations. Based on the specific requirements, one of the available transformations can be used. First, we need to handle the country field from SuperOffice. Let's add a new map list transformation. Select the appropriate column. Specify the output column name. And specify the conversion values. Second, we need an extra fixed column indicating the data is coming from SuperOffice. Specify the output column name and type the desired value. And last we need an extra column with a date and timestamp. The only thing you need to do is to specify the output column name. In step 4 of the wizard, you specify the specific output options. DataBridge supports many output formats. Since we have selected the output format Excel, I need to specify the file name. If you are not sure what a specific option means, you can always use the little question mark icon to get detailed information. In step 5 of the wizard, you define the specific profile settings. You can indicate if the profile is started manually, scheduled to run on a certain date or time, or executed by a super office event or an external trigger. I'll set up a nightly schedule. In the notification setting, 
You can indicate if you want to receive an email after a successful or failed execution. Step 6 shows you an overview of all the settings you've made. Now let's see the end result once the profile has been executed. The Super Office data file is now available on Dropbox, since we had selected Dropbox as the destination. When I open the file, I can see that the transformations took care of converting the country name to the country code. The fixed column indicating the source has been added. And the new timestamp column has been added as well. So this file is ready to be processed by the external system. Alright, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you don't want to miss other videos from us, don't forget to click the subscribe button. In the description below, you will find additional information, including how to start your free trial. Thanks for watching, until next time.